Hello, in this video I will explain to you how a simple equatorial mount such as the Skywatcher Star Adventurer works so well. Sure, in simple words I could say that well if you point this stuff at just the right spot on the night sky and you turn it on it will rotate in just enough speed in order to compensate for the Earth's rotational movement and that way the sky will remain static with regards to the camera mounted on this tracker. But why is it that it doesn't matter where on Earth are you actually located? Why is it that it doesn't matter where you actually point your camera which is mounted on this device? And why is it that the elevation angle on this wedge is supposed to match your current latitude. And also how this stuff is even supposed to work at all given the fact that we are on a giant rock that is rotating around its own axis but is also rotating around the sun which is also rotating around the center of the Milky Way and the movement of us with regards to the rest of the universe is pretty complex, right? So these are all the questions that we are going to be answering today so let's take a piece of paper and a pen and let's break this down. So first let's set the scene of where we are actually in the universe with regards to the sun and with regards to the center of our galaxy. We are on a tiny rock called the earth which um, you know could be represented like a, like a circle like this if we look like top down to the galaxy and now we are just on the surface of this rock and we are rotating around its own axis. And now of course the earth is rotating around the sun so right here somewhere we have the sun of course the size of the sun and the size of the earth is not to the realistic scale and now the earth is sort of moving around the sun and now the entire solar system is moving around the black hole in the center of our galaxy so everything is rotating around the center of this galaxy so when we stand right here on the surface of the earth the, our movement with regards to the entire universe is quite complex and we are going to get back to this drawing by the end of this video but right now let's focus on the earth's rotational movement around its own axis because that's the one that's going to be the most important. So right now let's draw again our earth that looks like a like a ball and now we are looking sort of from the side on the earth so right here this dashed line is the axis of rotation of earth around itself. So the earth is rotating, you know, like this. And now we are standing somewhere on the surface of the earth, which is, let's say that we are standing right here. And right now the perpendicular line to this axis of rotation defines the equator. So this is the equator right here. And our latitude is an angle between the equator and sort of our elevation here. So if we draw a line right here, connecting the middle of the earth with ourselves, this is the latitude that we are at. So this is the angle and let's call it phi. This is the angle phi. And now let's see what happens if you actually polar align your tracker standing right here on the surface of the earth. If you polar align this tracker, which means that the axis of the rotation of the right ascension axis is exactly parallel to the axis of rotation of the earth. So right here is the axis of rotation of our tracker. This is what it means to be polar aligned and it of course is aligned sort of in this direction but it also is aligned right here. So we are exactly parallel with the axis of rotation of the earth. This is what it means to be polar aligned. So let's see what happens if we draw a line connecting our horizon to the axis of rotation of the earth. So right here our horizon is sort of perpendicular to this radius right here. So this is our, uh, this is our horizon line. If we extend it and connect it with the axis of rotation of the earth, we get ourselves a triangle. And right here we have a right angle of this triangle. And now if we draw a perpendicular line that is perpendicular to both of these axes of rotation and also goes through this point, so this is going to be a section from here to here, right here we have a right angle, right here we also have a right angle, and right now we have this polygon with four sides. We have a polygon that sides are defined like this one two three and four and the sum of all the inner angles in any polygon with four sides is always 360 degrees and also if we take a look at this here right here we also have a right angle and because we have phi right here so that this angle must be 90 degrees which is the right angle minus phi so right here we have 90 minus phi this is the angle right here and now we have this polygon with four sides we have a right angle here a right angle here right here we have 90 minus phi so this angle from this to here is 90 
plus phi. But take a look at this here. Right here we have a right angle which is 90 degrees. So this tiny angle right here, this is also phi. And this is the elevation angle that we have to set on our wedge, on our star tracker. And that's why this angle is exactly the angle of our latitude. Okay, so right now let's think about what does it actually mean to be polar aligned? Because if we stood at exactly this pole, let's say that this is the North Pole, if we stood with our tracker exactly at the North Pole, then our axis will be the same exact line in space. These axes of rotation of our tracker and the axis of rotation of the Earth would match exactly. And then if the Earth is spinning in that direction and our tracker is spinning in the opposite direction, that means that we are exactly stationary with regards to the Earth's rotational movement. But if we are anywhere on the planet Earth beside the North or South Pole, we are going around a circle. And the circle, the size of the circle could be at most the size of the Earth at the equator, but also can be smaller. And right here, if we are at this latitude, we are going around a circle that looks something like this. This is like a 3D drawing we are going around a circle like this. So why is it that we can still track the sky and be stationary with regards to the sky and take log exposure photos if we are going around a circle like this? And for that, let's draw a top-down view from this side on a separate piece of paper. All right, so again, we start by drawing a circle. Let's draw a pretty large one this time. And right here is the axis of rotation because we are looking from straight up down on Earth. So if this is the North Pole, then the Earth is rotating like this. It's rotating like this. And we are standing on the surface of the Earth somewhere right here. And this is not exactly, this doesn't have to be like the equator, like I showed you in the previous drawing. If we are in any latitude that is higher than the equator, then the circle of our movement around the axis of rotation of the Earth can get smaller. So we are standing somewhere right here. And actually, I have this little symbol of a camera which we can place somewhere on the circle right here. And again, this camera can be pointed anywhere you want because you can take a picture of any portion of the night sky that you want. So let's say that we are pointed right here. And right now, if the tracker is not turned on and we are just rotating along with the Earth, of course, the camera is sort of attached to the surface of the Earth. And if the Earth is rotating, take a look at what happens with the camera. The camera is no longer pointing in this direction, it is changing its direction. It is changing the angle at which it is looking towards the outer space. And this is, of course, because the camera sits on the surface of the Earth. But let's take a look at what happens if we turn on a properly aligned tracker. So right now, as you can see, the camera is also, of course, rotating around the circle, but it is also rotating around itself in just the right speed in order to be constantly pointing in this direction towards the outer space. And this is essentially what tracking the sky is. All right, and right now, let's think about why is it that it doesn't matter that we are still going around a circle as long as we are keeping our camera pointed at the exact same angle to the outer space, to the stars that we are trying to photograph. Because if we take a two parallel lines, these are two parallel lines, and they are at a distance from each other, a very small distance compared to the distances to the stars. And those parallel lines are always at a same distance between each other. No matter how far you go, no matter if it's light years away, those two parallel lines will be still at the same distance between each other. And frankly, the radius of the Earth, the distances that you can travel throughout a single exposure when you have your camera on the tracker is nothing compared to the vast distances between you and the stars that you are photographing, be it inside the Milky Way, or maybe even other galaxies like the Andromeda galaxy, for instance. So this tiny little shift in how we look at those stars it's not possible to be resolved by our camera sensors or our eyes. But again, how is it that if we have a slight deviation of the angle at which we are looking at those stars, why this very, very tiny angle compared again to the distances between stars is so apparent and it causes trailing? Well, that's because if we have a small deviation right here, let's say that this line is not exactly parallel, but it's very much almost parallel. As you can see right at the beginning, they are very close to each other, but if the distance is going to be further and further away from each other, if we extend them, as you can see, the further we go, the more apart they are between each other. Even if this angle is very, very, very small, 
it gets exaggerated quite a lot if you are looking at great distances. And that's why if you have the exact same angle of looking at the things that you are photographing, which are the stars, that it doesn't matter that you are moving around a circle like this, as long as the angle is the same, you're not going to see star trace. And that is how tracking works. And right now, let's go back to the image with the solar system and with the Milky Way, which I have right here. And as you can see, let's take our camera again. So the movement of us around the sun and then with the sun around the center of the Milky Way is quite complex. But as long as we keep our angle at which we are viewing other stars the same, it doesn't matter if we rotate around the sun. It doesn't matter if you rotate it with the sun around the center of the Milky Way. As long as the tracker is making sure that we are always at all times aligned in the same exact parallel lines with regards to the things that we are photographing, we are not going to see star trace. And if you're interested to learn more about this, what is our trajectory with regards to the universe throughout our lifetimes, there's an excellent video from Vsauce, which I will link down below in the description box so you can learn more about it. It is quite fascinating. So hopefully by now you have a better understanding of how equatorial mounts actually work and why is it that they allow us to take long exposure photos of the magnificent night sky. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And also if you like this kind of scientific breakdowns about things related to photography and filmmaking, definitely check out these two videos. You will definitely find them very interesting. Also don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I will be posting more videos like this and I post pretty much new video every single week. So it's definitely worth subscribing. So I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.